All right, well, we're going to get right into it tonight. Uh, tonight's topic, extremely important. I mean, this is life-changing stuff. Out of all the presentations I do, this is probably the most important presentation because it has the longest la lasting, uh, the biggest effect on your life. And I do not exaggerate when I say this. And what tonight's topic is, of course, is stretching and stretching the proper way. Now, most people don't even know what stretching is, so we're going to go over what stretching is, we're going to go over how to do it, when to do it, why do it, more than you ever want to know about stretching. But my goal is this, is that at the end of our presentation, you know, your awareness of stretching is right here and how important it is is probably right here. I want to send it off the scale so that we're all stretching every single day. Okay? Benefits of stretching. That's okay. What's in it for me? That's what I always, why, why should I listen to this guy about stretching? I was ticking off just maybe 10 things that, that are just fantastic about stretching. Number one, makes you feel better. When you get up and you stretch, you just feel better. Number two, it will give you an instant boost of energy. It will actually improve your circulation. You see, when you get up and you stretch, it releases millions of blood cells back into circulation, give you that boost of energy and clear your mind. So instant gratification right then and there. Okay? It prevents arthritis and wear and tear on your joints. Pretty important. It helps with respiration. That's breathing. See, if for, in order for you to get a nice deep breath, all these ribs and the joints along your spine, your ribs have to be nice and mobile so they can open up and pull in that air. Now, when you have, uh, when you're working out or just any time, you need that oxygen circulating through your body. So stretching is going to keep your respiration in great shape. There, it's going to prevent injuries. When you're flexible, you're not going to be getting the muscle pulls and the strains and the sprains. It's going to improve performance. Uh, when you're stretching and you have good flexibility, you perform better at any sport or any physical activity. And let me give you a quick example of that you know, for all you athletes out there. I know there's a lot of them. Baseball. Who's the best home run hitter of all time? Babe Ruth. All right, we'll say Babe Ruth. He's not anymore, but <laughs> everybody knows Babe Ruth. We're going to have a hitting contest between Babe Ruth and me. Okay, but here's the rules. We're only going to let Babe Ruth swing from here to here. That's as far as we're going to let him swing, okay? But me, we're going to let the ball, we're going to be able to swing all the way from back here, swing all the way through. Who do you think is going to be able to hit that ball further? Me or Babe Ruth? You. Why? Because of that range of motion. Think about it. You could have the strongest guy in the world, these huge muscles all over him, but if he can't move his joints only through a small range of motion, he's got all that power, but it's totally useless because he can't put it into, into play, you see? So it's that range of motion and the speed you can generate with it that actually produces usable power and strength when you perform. And it doesn't matter what kind of work you're doing. You see? Golfing, same thing. If you ever watch a, a video of Tiger Woods when he golfs, when he does his backswing, this arm right here, when he comes up like this, his arm here is straight up and down. That's how much flexibility that guy has. Try that. You just you know, take a second, you try that, and you'll see the guy's a phenom because of that flexibility. That's how he can generate so much power. So flexibility is going to improve your performance, your strength. It's going to prevent arthritis. It's going to keep you young and, and going into your, your uh, at least your 90s. In our office, we have a standing guarantee. If you stretch the way I teach you, and you don't make it to your 90s, you can come in for a full refund. Okay? <laughs> We've never had anybody take us up on that. <laughs> so benefits of stretching, huge. And actually, the biggest benefit, I'm going to wait, and I'm going to explain at the, at the end, okay? Because that's a little bit more complicated. But let's talk about what type of stretching I'm talking about here. Most people, when you think of stretching, they think of stretching what? Hamstrings. Hamstrings, muscles, yeah. right? When you think stretching, I'm going to stretch my muscles. I don't want you to think stretching muscles anymore. I want you to start thinking stretching joints. Okay, and here's the difference. A joint is actually made up of two bones, right? And those bones move. That's why it's called a, it's a joint. Now, what moves those those bones? What moves the the bone? The muscle, right? Yeah, muscle. yeah. you can say it. There are no wrong answers. Don't <laughs> just spit it out there. But yeah, there's a muscle that goes from one side to the other, and that's what moves the joint. Now, most people think they want to stretch that muscle, but
But in reality, what we want to do is to prevent that arthritis and keep the cartilage and the ligaments nice and healthy, is we need to keep that, the joint itself moving. Muscles are kind of elastic. It's like pulling a, um, a rubber band, yeah. you see. So, but ligaments, they take a lot of work to keep those mobile, you see. So <clears throat> only four simple rules to stretching. Now, if you know those simple rules, you can apply it to any movable joint in your body, and you're home free. You don't need tons of charts and uh, you know, yoga classes and everything else. The bottom line is this. If it moves, and you like it moving, and you want to keep it moving, you have to stretch it. Bottom line. So let's go over the rules real quickly here. Rule number one is you need to relax the muscles in the area that you're stretching. Okay? So you don't want the muscles tight because you want those muscles nice and loose because you're not trying to stretch the muscle, you're trying to stretch the joint underneath the muscle. So think about it, if you have a joint, there's a muscle going from one side to the other and the muscle tightens up, what happens to the joint? It just slams shut. And even though you're pulling on it, you can't open it up to get the movement on the joint, you're just doing a tug of war on the muscle. Okay? And there's a really good example of that I can show you here. Now, if I stretch this joint in my finger, it's probably a little hard to see from the back, but if I pull it, I'll show it come up closer, there's actually a little gap that opens up right there. Okay? And I'll show that on camera real close. We'll get a close-up of that. But if I tighten this muscle up even a little bit, I can pull with maybe 10, 15, 20 pounds. That joint doesn't open up at all. I relax it and pull on it. It opens right up and stretches. So rule number one, vitally important, is you want to relax the muscles in the area that you're stretching. Does that make sense? If it makes sense, say right on. Right on. Very good. Yeah, excellent. Rule number two. <clears throat> this is a big one. No pain. Okay, the old no pain, no gain does not hold when it comes to stretching. You know, I see people stretching and tears are coming out of their eyes. Now, what do you think happens when you stretch so hard that it hurts? What do you think those muscles around the area are doing? Ripping. Yeah, and they're tightening up to try to guard the area, so you're breaking rule number one. As soon as you feel pain, the, the area will tighten and guard, and you're just doing a tug of war on the muscles, and it's no good. So rule number one was relax the muscles. Rule number two is no pain. Now, you should feel stretching, but not really. It shouldn't hurt. And for some people, that's hard to explain. You don't want to be tearing yourself up, but you definitely want to feel a good stretch in there. Okay? Rule number three is you have to move slowly into the stretch, and you need to move slowly out of the stretch. Your body has a reflex. When the joint moves quickly, your, your body has a reflex that tightens up the muscles. It's a protective mechanism. Guess what that reflex is called? I'll give anybody a dollar that can guess it. It's called the stretch reflex. <laughs> That's right. And the best example of that is somebody has their legs crossed and you hit them on the knee, what's their leg do? It jerks, right? Your body has this, this reflex for a reason. If you were to trip and fall down, you don't have time to think, well, I better tighten everything up and protect myself. Your body instantly tightens up to protect you, right? But if you're stretching and you're doing quick bouncy movements, like that was real popular in the 70s, you know, do the bounces. Every time you bounce, what happens to the muscles? They tighten up. And which rule are you breaking? Number one again. So number one, relax the muscles. Number two, no pain. Number three, slow movements into the stretch. Slow movements out of the stretch. Does that make sense? Out of your head. Yes. yes. Very good, Dr. Pierce. Good. <laughs> Rule number four. And this is probably the one that most people miss. And that is you need to hold the stretch. Longer is better. But at least, at least a minimum of 10 seconds per repetition. Okay? 15 seconds is better. And it's, it's 15 seconds. It's not like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, number 15. Okay? It's like this. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, up to how many Mississippis? Fifteen. Fifteen. Right. So try it right now just to get an idea of how long that is. Tilt your head over to the side. Listen to a simple neck stretch. We're going to count to fifteen. One, two, three, fifteen. <laughs> Alright, relax. I don't want to be everybody bored on the video if we've all the way to fifteen. But it's longer <laughs> than you would think. So you need to hold the stretch at least fifteen seconds. Four simple rules. You can apply those to any movable joint in your body. Which joints in your body should you stretch? Everyone. That's right. Everyone you want to keep moving. There's something that's, that's very interesting that happens to movable joints. You stop moving that joint, it'll fill up with scar tissue and become completely immobile 
in only 60 days. So if you were to take a normal knee joint and you put a cast on somebody, no injury, just a normal knee joint, and you left that cast on there for 60 days, the joint would be completely immobile and full of scar tissue just from not moving it, you see? So movement is vital to nice, healthy joints. It's what prevents arthritis. Now, I want you to picture in your mind a minute. Five-year-old boy, he's out running around on the concrete playground. He trips and he falls down. What happens? He gets up, brushes himself off, and... Yeah, five on. minutes later, what's he doing? He's up running around again, all right? All right, now picture in your mind an 85-year-old boy, 85-year-old man running on the concrete, and he slips and he falls down. Right, Just call 911, right? Man down. Now, what's the difference there? Strength. Age, right? Wrong! <laughs> it's not age so much. And I can still remember in chiropractic college, just one of our professors, um, 80 something years old, she wouldn't tell us exactly how old she was, but I can still remember her in front of the class pointing his bony finger at us saying, don't you let anybody ever tell you that your age has anything to do with your flexibility. And she would bounce down, and she'd put both hands flat on the floor, she'd bounce right back up, and she'd go, I've been stretching since before all you were born. I'll be stretching after half of you were long gone. And she was a dancer, and she was very flexible, and she stretched every day. And she always told us, don't ever let anybody say your age has anything to do with your flexibility. As long as you stretch every day on a regular basis, you'll stay nice and mobile your whole life. So it's not an age issue, it's an inactivity and conditioning issue, okay? Now, let's talk a little bit about joints and movement. When we think about range of motion, or how far a joint moves, that's called your range of motion. So you have three ranges of motion, and this is what people don't understand. Your first range of motion that everybody knows about is called your active range of motion. So with my fingers, that's as far as I can move my fingers with my muscles, right? I can't go any further than that. That's as far as they go. That's the active range of motion. But see, if I take my other hand and I push, you see how much further that joint actually moves? That's the active range of motion. There's the passive range of motion, okay? And there's a third movement, and I showed you a little bit earlier, it's called joint play. When I relax the joint and I pull on this joint, there's actually a little bit of movement in there. That's a normal joint, that's what you need. Guess which one you lose first? Right, it's the joint play. But you don't even know it's gone, right? Because you can do all your normal daily activities with your active range of motion. Then people start losing their passive range of motion. All this movement here, they start losing it little by little because they're inactive and they're sitting in a computer or sitting on the couch being a couch potato. They start losing it, losing it, losing it. They don't even know it because they can still do all their normal daily activities. Then they start losing a little bit of their active range of motion and they think, oh, I'm getting a little stiff. And in reality, they might have lost 30 or 40 percent or more of the movement on that joint. Now let's get back to our five-year-old. Now five-year-olds running around the playground, they've got a full range of motion, don't they? Full passive, full joint play. When they fall down, it's like shock absorbers and springs hitting the ground. So they bounce right back up. Now our stereotypical 85-year-old who sat on the couch for the last 20 years, he doesn't have all that nice movement, does he? So he goes to here, and then what happens past this point? Snap, crackle, pop, 911, man down. You see? That is totally preventable. Totally preventable. And you see men and women as they age, and they start getting this big hump in their back, and they start moving like this. You see? Totally preventable. Osteoarthritis, you keep the joint moving, it will stay healthy. The cartilage will stay healthy. It's, it's phenomenal. Okay? It's, it's vitally important to your health your whole life. And it, you know, the good thing is, I got great news for you. Stretching doesn't cost anything. It's absolutely free. You can do it anywhere, anytime, I mean virtually anywhere and anytime. You don't need any special apparatus, right? No equipment needed, and it feels good. It's almost too good to be true, isn't it? That's why people don't put the importance on it that it really deserves. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, um, how to get stretching done. This is what I want you to do, and this everybody has to do this without fail. Every single day, I want you to spend 90 minutes, 90, 90 minutes a day doing your stretching. Can you do that all right? 
all these blank looks. No, no it was a joke. <laughs> That's the only thing that hurts in our office are the corny jokes. No, it's impossible. Nobody's going to do that. Matter of fact, even if I told you to do 30 minutes a day, what I've seen over 30 years in practice is people do it great for a week or two, and then something happens. It's called life. And they can't get that 30 minutes you know, every day to do it. So here's the key to stretching. <clears throat> Actually, two keys. Number one is you've got to make it a priority. Excuse me a second. I've got to clear my throat here. <clears throat> okay. Number one, you have to make it a priority. You see, it has to be important in your mind or you, it won't get done at all, ever. Number two, this is the real secret. You have to look for opportunities every single day to get your stretching done. And there's, there's as many opportunities as you have you know, an imagination to put it forward. But I'm, I'm going to give you a couple of examples that are just going to make this whole video worthwhile. Okay. Number one, how many people over here drove over in their car? Everybody, right? How many people here, as they were driving over here, stopped at a red light? Everybody, right? Well, I'm going to change your whole outlook on red lights. This is going to be awesome for you from, from this day forward. From now on, when you come to red light, it's not going to be, ah, red light. Now it's going to be, all right, red light. I'm going to get stretching done. Because every single day when we drive to, to and from work or school or wherever we're going, we're going to hit that dead time at the red light. It's a perfect time to stretch your neck. Okay? And let's think about the way our necks move. Six basic directions, real simple. Forward, backwards, tilt, tilt, rotate, rotate. So if we stretch each, each direction 15 seconds, how long would it take us? For the mathematicians, it's 90 seconds, minute and a half. You get a three-way red light, how long are you sitting there? 90 seconds. Probably. Oh, so let's say you don't get all six done in one light. How many people hit more than one light on the way to work? Exactly. So you get one light, you get two done. The next, you get two more done. Every day on the way to work, you can get your stretching done, and, it, and it's awesome. You see, it didn't take a second out of your day, did it? Now, I always have somebody go, oh, you know, I'll be all embarrassed. You know, I'll be stretching. It might be over, another guy looking over this way. Give him a wave. He's one of my patients for sure. <laughs> And this is California. Anything goes. Or well, at least that's where we're doing the, the video. <laughs> it's in California. You can do anything here. Everybody's going to look at you, right? So every single day on the way to work to and from, grab that dead time and get some stretching done. Good deal? Okay, let me give you another example where it won't take any time out of your day, and yet it will make a huge difference in your health over time. Every Saturday night, what do we do whether we need to or not? Younger people never know this. <laughs> <laughs> Every Saturday night we take a bath, right? We take our bath for Sunday to church. <laughs> Every time you get out of the shower, you've got two things, two very important things. Number one is you've got a wet back. Number two is you've got a towel. So here's the, what you can do. is You can take uh, one minute and stretch out your shoulders. You can get all the movement in both shoulders. It takes one minute of your day. And I'm going to show you how to do it. Okay. Now, you have to be a little careful with this stretching technique um, because you give your, your towel a good hard pull, you're going to be sore for a month. You're going to be really mad at me. So you have to do this very lightly and very gradually. But remember the rules of stretching? What was rule number one? Relax the muscles. Right. Rule number two? No pain. No pain. Right. So let's keep those in mind, okay? And slow movements was rule number three. So you've got towel in your hand. You're going to put the towel between your two hands because you're going to dry your back, right? Okay, now I'm going to stretch this shoulder, so I need to keep this one relaxed, the left shoulder, correct? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to use this hand, and I'm going to gently pull up, and I'm going to stretch, and I'm going to hold it how long? 15, 15 seconds. 15 seconds, that's correct. Now I'm going to switch. I'm going to stretch this side, so I'm going to relax this side, and I'm going to pull with my left shoulder down. How long? 15, 15 seconds, then I switch. Pull up, 15 seconds, pull down, 15 seconds. Now, this isn't a strengthening exercise. Both hands are not pulling at the same time. One is pulling, one is relaxed. Does that make sense? And do not give it a good hard pull. You'll be mad at me. But this simple stretch that takes one minute a day will keep all the internal rotation, abduction, external rotation, abduction in your shoulder, keep you ha having healthy shoulders your whole life. You see? And what happens with most people is they don't ever do this stretch. How often in your day 
do you reach up and back like this? Very rarely if you're an adult these days. I mean, it just doesn't happen that much. So over time, with the muscles always contracting and the, and the ligaments getting shorter, pretty soon you can't get up here anymore, right? Pretty soon it's this level. And then a few years later, it's about here. But you know what happens, and this is really bad, is your mind remembers you used to be able to get up there. So one day, what do you do? You go for it. And you get to about right here, and what happens? Rip. Oh, that didn't feel good. So what's the average person do? Now my shoulder hurts. They put their shoulder here, and they don't move it for a few days. And what, that scar tissue heals that tear, and now they can only get to here. You see? And then one day they go for it again. Rip. Oh, now they got a second layer of scar tissue on there. So what do they do? Same thing. They don't move it, and pretty soon they can't get to here. You see how that works over time, and it gets tighter and stiffer, tighter and stiffer. By keeping that simple stretch going, you won't get that tear. And if you do get a tear, you want to gently keep that moving as it heals. Even if you need to get some help, you know, chiropractically, this is one of the things we do, is make sure that injury heals with a full range of motion, so that when you're done healing, you can still have full range. Does that make sense? Okay, very, very good. All right, so we did... Um, the next stretch, when you're in the car, stopping at a red light, we did the shoulder stretch. What are some other times you can stretch? Commercials. Commercials, you bet. You have a favorite TV show you watch. Here's the key. That was a great, great uh, intro. It's almost like I paid you to do that. Here's the deal. If you watch television, even a half hour show a, a week, Okay. Now, I know we can't carve out these huge blocks of time to do stretching every day, but if you're going to watch television and there's a good show on, instead of just being on the couch, getting stiffer and being a couch potato, get down on the carpet in front of the TV or on your bed, you know, watching TV, and as you're watching your show, in 20 minutes you can do a full body stretch. You just go through, you start at the top, you do your shoulders, it moves, okay, your elbow, it moves, I'm going to stretch it, your wrist, your fingers. You go right through your ribs, lean to the side, full body stretch in 20 minutes, and your show is only half over. Okay? What if you did that two or three times a week when you're watching your favorite shows? Okay? Then throughout the week, you're, you're finding little opportunities to do the rest of the, rest of the stretching. You're standing in line at the supermarket. Okay? You can be stretching your wrist. You can be stretching your fingers. You can be, you know, without causing a big scene, you can be stretching your shoulder. You know, if you don't mind causing a scene, you could be doing this. <laughs> you know, it's California. Nobody cares. But the point is, you're stretching. And I know what's going to happen. People are going to go, Donnie, why are you always fidgeting? Go, oh, no. I'm not fidgeting. I'm stretching like Dr. Pierce told me. Matter of fact, here's his card. Call him. He'll teach you. Make sense? Stretch everything. Okay? Now, why is this so important? Well, I gave you probably half a dozen different benefits when we started, but I didn't give you the most important one. And this is why stretching is vitally important to every aspect of your health. And that has to do with the health of all those joints in your spine. I brought a model of a spine. <clears throat> this is just a plastic model. Some people get real wigged out. They think it's real bone. This is just a plastic model. But I just wanted to show, and everybody knows they have a spine, but look at all these movable joints all the way down your spine and in your pelvis. See, and in between each one of these bones in your spine is a huge bundle of nerves that come out. Okay. Anybody know the job of the nervous system? What's it control? Everything. What part of your body? Everything. That's right. There's no human experience that's not directed directly through our nervous system. The nervous system is made up of the brain, which sits right up here in the skull. The main branch off your brain is that spinal cord that goes right through the middle, and then every level there's this huge bundle of nerves that come out. So if the joints in your spine are getting real stiff and locked up in one area, that m movement has to be made up somewhere, and that's what's going to cause damage to the joints. So here's like what a normal spine should move like this. Okay, does that make sense? Here's the most common problem I see in practice. Areas become stiff and locked up, and this can be old injuries, inactivity, the type of pillow you use, men sitting on a wallet, women carrying a heavy purse on their shoulder, auto accidents, there's 101 reasons, more than that, 1,001 reasons. But when one area gets stiff, you can see what happens to the workload. See how the joints over here are being overworked? Day after day, month after month, 
year after year. What do you think happens to these joints? They wear out. It's called osteoarthritis. It's a wear and tear, degenerative disc disease, degenerative joint disease. These are all names for wear and tear type of arthritis. And it all happens because of the movement on the joints. So if somebody was injured, like in an auto accident or a sports injury, and they think, oh, you know, I healed up, all the pain's gone, and they're fine, but their spine is left moving like this, is that fine? No. And the difference between chiropractors and medical doctors is, they'll say, well, let's check the movement on your neck. They'll say, move your head over here, move your head over here. Oh, that's fine, everything's good. But there's seven joints in there. You see, this could be happening, and your overall movement could be normal. But does that look normal? No way. What chiropractors do that's totally unique and different is we check each individual joint in your spine and make sure that each joint is working through a full range of motion in all its normal directions. Because if we find this area that's locked up, we know that wear and tear and arthritis is following. Now if these joints are overworked and they're starting to swell up and, and become inflamed and they're starting to break down and degenerate, what do you think happens to that big nerve bundle that's right next to that joint? That's right, it becomes irritated, it becomes, you've heard of a pinched nerve? Most pinched nerves are because there's inflammation squeezing the nerve. It's not a bone pinching it, it's all that inflammation and swelling. So what is the typical medical approach for that? Pain That's right, let's knock out the pain with some painkillers, let's get rid of that inflammation with some anti-inflammatories. How's that feel, buddy? Oh, that feels great, I can go back and start exercising now, doc, everything's fine. See what happens? And over time, this is going to get so bad, you can't take enough drugs to cover up the symptoms anymore. And by the time that happens, of course, the damage is done. And this is what the damage looks like. Got this nice, cool little model right here. You can see this. This is what a normal spine looks like. This is phase one, phase two, and phase three. It's a process that happens over time. This doesn't happen because you're unlucky. It happens because there's abnormal movement, abnormal mechanics that causes wear and tear. I, I like to use the analogy of the front end of your car. How many people here know what happens if the, your car is out of alignment and out of balance? What happens to those tires? They last longer or shorter? Sure. Right, everybody knows that. Well, if you go out to your car and say, oh, doggone, you know, the tires are wearing out. And then you run in and you get it balanced and aligned. It doesn't fix the damage that's already there, does it? It just stops it from getting, you know, progressing quicker. But your spine is the same way. If you're already over here, we can't back it up. So stretching every day will prevent this, you see? And if you have areas that are locked up and stiff, that's where we need chiropractors. And that's the only reason we need chiropractors. Because you can't do it yourself. When you try to stretch it out yourself, once you have this condition and you stretch it, the normal joints will just compensate. You see, and that problem area will stay there. Matter of fact, if you work it really hard, you could actually speed up some, some trouble in there. So you have, that's why we have to follow the rules of stretching very carefully. It's very important. You start jerking and doing quick bouncy movements and you're not warmed up, very bad. Make sense? Mm -hmm. You know, it's one thing I, I forgot to tell you too, was uh, what we need to do is always warm up before we stretch. Okay? People think they, they stretch as part of their warm up. Not good. There's three things you need to do. Number one is warm up. Then you do your workout, and then you cool down with your stretching. And the, the reason is this, is when you're uh, cold, let's say first thing in the morning you get up, you can stretch, but you just have to be very careful and move very slowly. Because your ligaments and your tendons inside your joints have properties similar to a stick of chewing gum. You take a stick of chewing gum, you put it in the freezer, take it out and bend it, what happens? It snaps. We take a stick of chewing gum, you put it in a warm oven for a couple minutes, pull it out, Nice and pliable, right? Think of your joints like that. You jump up on a cold day and you start doing some heavy stretching, research has actually found that you get micro tears in the fibers and it can actually set you up for an injury. So what you want to do is when you're really cold and you haven't worked out, you want to just gently go through a range of motion to get some blood pumping through the joint and the muscles to get you ready to work. Then you bring up your workload, you do your workout, and then when you're all warmed up, you stretch as your cool down. That's the ideal situation, okay? But you can actually stretch anywhere, anytime, and it's going to be good for you. You just have to be careful if you're cold. When you're warm and you use the stretching as your cool down, that is absolutely ideal.
Okay? Now, once again, if we keep our spine nice and healthy, nervous system's working at 100%, what do you think that does for our health? Anybody here have a sore neck ever? Lower neck gets stiff? The nerves that come out of your lower neck control more than just your arms and your hands, which most people know about. You get numbness in the hands, right? You get some pain in the arm. The you know, going to sleep sensation. That's all pinched nerve in your neck. What most people don't understand is that same bundle of nerves also controls your heart and your lungs. So if you're getting this stiff neck and you haven't stretched out and you've let it get damaged and the nerves are going to your heart and your lungs, do you think your heart and lungs work better or worse? Worse. Worse. Low back pain, number one condition next to the common cold, right? Everybody knows somebody that has low back pain if you haven't had it yourself. Well, the nerves that exit right at your belt, they do more than just put your low back into spasms. That same bundle of nerves controls your colon, your bladder, your reproductive organs. So if the nerve, you know, you get low back pain, your back's in spasm, those same nerve, bundle of nerves are going to your intestine, you can get symptoms like, what would you guess? You heard about bowels? Irritable bowel syndrome, Crohn's disease, um, constipation, diarrhea, you see? If you're not eliminating those toxins regularly, what does that do for the rest of your health? It's very damaging. All because you got damaged to the joints in your low back and the muscles got weak in your low back. Now they're pressing on that nervous system and you got big problems. Most of this can be prevented with stretching, mild exercise, and of course, always get a chiropractic checkup. Everybody needs a chiropractic checkup. Because like I said, you go to your MD, he's gonna go, oh yeah, you got a great range of motion, everything's fine. Yeah, everything's fine. You know what sends more people to my office than any other statement, the medical doctor's office? It's not bad enough for surgery yet. Here's your prescription, okay? I love that. Then they come like, well, let's not let it get that bad, you see? Chiropractor's job is to get on that area that's tight and locked up, localize that section, gently get it moving again so that your spine is working like this and then you stretch on top of that for the rest of your life, you will stay healthy until at least we guarantee you how old? 112. Okay, I like that guarantee even better. Now I only guarantee in your 90s, okay? <laughs> if you die beforehand, come in for a full refund. It's always the way we work. All right, any questions? So far so good? Your head's spinning like this, I know. All right, um, that's it. We're all finished with stretching.